As we worked to solve our right triangles for missing sides and missing angles, we had this caveat that it had to be a right triangle. Well, that begs the question, how do we solve other triangles? Triangles that have no right angle in them. Well, the answer to that question is a two-part answer. We're going to cover part one of that answer in this video and part two in the next video. So first, some theory behind what we're doing. Let's say I have some triangle. It's not a right triangle. And let's give it two angles. Let's say this is angle alpha and angle beta. Again, Greek letters to represent angles. And we're going to label the opposite side from alpha the letter A, and the opposite side from beta the letter B. We're also going to drop the height down on this triangle, because when we drop the height, that will create two right triangles. We have. Um, the right triangle on the left and the right triangle on the right. And notice from that, from alpha and beta, the height is always the opposite side. And the A and the B are always the hypotenuse side. We don't know anything about the adjacents to alpha and beta. If I were to take then the sine of the alpha angle, that would be equal to the opposite or the height over the hypotenuse, which is B. And if I were to take the sine of the other angle, the sine of beta, that would be equal to the opposite h over the hypotenuse side, which in this case would be the a. We can solve both of these equations for the height by multiplying by the denominators. So the first one would be b times the sine of alpha is equal to the height. And the second one would be a times the sine of the beta is equal to the height. And since they're both equal to the height, they must both be equal to each other. So the first one is b sine of alpha must be equal to the other one, which is a sine of beta. To make this formula, though, easier to use, we're going to divide both sides by the side lengths. We're going to divide by AB on both sides. And when we do that, we can reduce out the A's and the B's. And what that leaves us with is that the sine of alpha divided by the opposite side A is equal to the sine of beta divided by the opposite side, b. And similarly, we can extend this and say, also, if the other angle was gamma, the sine of gamma, another Greek letter, over its opposite side, which would be c. This formula is what we call the law of sines. And that is the sine of any angle divided by the opposite side is equal to the sine of any other angle divided by the opposite side. So this is the big formula that you need to know for today's video. And so if that's the law of sines, let's see if we can use it to help us solve triangles that are not right triangles. So here's another triangle not drawn to scale. We're going to say the top angle is 80 degrees, the left angle is 40 degrees, and the bottom side is 15. Notice if I go in order, we've got an angle, an angle, and a side. We call that angle, angle, side. We should be able to solve this triangle for all the missing pieces. We've got a missing 
uh, side on the left. We've got a missing side on the right. And we also have a missing angle, which I'll just call theta. As we solve, the important thing we note is that we know an angle and its opposite side. So that tells us that the sine of that angle 80 divided by its opposite side 15 would be equal to the sine of another angle, 40, divided by the opposite side, which is y. And now we can solve for the y, which is opposite the 40. Solving for the y, we multiply both sides by y to get it out of the fraction. So we have the sine of 80 over 15 equals the sine of 40. And then to get y by itself, we can multiply the sine of 40 by the reciprocal 15 over the sine of 80. Again, when we type this in our calculator, we'll be careful to put parentheses around the sign. And because there's a lot of stuff happening in the numerator and the denominator, we'll put parentheses around the numerator. So if we open a parentheses for the numerator and take the sine of 40, close the parentheses on the sign, times 15, close the parentheses on the numerator, divided by the sine of 80, close the parentheses on the sign, and hit Enter, we find out our first missing side y is 9.79. So 9.79 for that missing side. We can find x in much the same way, but first we need to know what its opposite angle is. And that's found easy enough. Theta, the angle, is always equal to 180 minus the other two angles, minus 80 minus 40. And so theta, the angle over there, is equal to a 60 degree angle. So using the law of sines then, we'll still use the pieces that we knew, starting with the sine of 80 divided by 15. And then we'll go to the pieces we don't know, the sine of 60 over x. The sine of 60 over x. And we're going to solve it in much the same way, multiplying both sides by x, leaving behind the sine of 60, and then getting the x alone by multiplying the sine of 60 by the reciprocal times 50 over the sine of 80 making sure I remember every time I hit sign, it'll open a parentheses. I need to remember to close it and close the parentheses around the entire thing. And when you put that in the calculator in much the same way, you'll find out that the missing side is 13.19. So for missing sides, 13.19. We've now solved for the two missing sides and the missing angle of our triangle. Let's try another example. We'll call that example 1. Let's do now example 2. Let's say we have a triangle, again, not to scale, where the top angle is 70 degrees, the left side is 9, and the bottom is 10. Notice this one, if I go in order, we've got an angle, a side, and a side. We'll call that angle side side. And these problems become somewhat annoying. If we end up with an ASS, and you can spell that and figure out why it's a pain in the butt, are a little tricky. Whenever we have an ASS relationship, let's go ahead and write this ASS, sometimes that means we could have 0. Sometimes it could mean we have 1. And sometimes it could mean we have two options for our triangle, which means we're going to have to take 180 minus the angles for the second option. Here's what I mean by that. 
the first thing I see is we've got 70 directly across from the 10. So that's going to be my first setup, that the sine of 70 over 10 is equal to, let's say this first angle, we're going to call it alpha, is directly across from the 9. The alpha is the one that we could have 0, 1, or 2 options for. So we'll say that the sine of the alpha over 9. We'll start solving this equation. We can multiply both sides by 9. So we have 9 sine of 70 divided by 10 equals the sine of alpha. And we found out in our previous video that the opposite of a sine to undo sine is to do a sine inverse of the other side of 9 sine 70 over 10 equals alpha. So on our calculator, we'll hit second sine inverse of 9 times the sine of 70. Make sure you close the parentheses on the sine. Divided by 10, close the parentheses on the sine inverse. And it's going to tell me that alpha is equal to 57.7 degrees. That is one option. Or it could be equal to what's left over when we take 180 minus the angle of 57.7, which would be 122.3. So we have two options for alpha. The way we're going to decide which one is correct is we're going to look at the other angle, beta. Doing the other angle, beta, in the first case, we know all the angles are 180 minus the 70 that was given to us minus the 57.7. When we do it that way, we end up beta is equal to 52.2 degrees. So we've got one option here. Alpha is 57.7, beta 52.2. Or alpha could be 122 degrees. To find beta, beta we take the 180 degrees. We subtract the 70 that was given to us. And we'll also subtract the 122.3 degrees that we just found. In that case, beta is equal to negative 12.3. Well, we can't have a negative angle. So in this case, the second option did not come to fruition. If beta was positive, we'd actually be talking about two different triangles, and we'd have to solve for both of them. But in this case, since we got a negative, only one of them actually exists. So we now know that alpha must be 57.7. Beta, the other angle, is 52.2. We now can solve for the only missing piece, side B, which is opposite the 52.2 angle. So we set up that our sine of 70 over 10 is equal to the sine of 52.2 over the opposite side of B. And we can solve it in much the same way. Multiply both sides by b. Gives us b sine 70 over 10 is the sine of 52.2. Multiplying by the reciprocal, we get the sine of 52.2 times 10 divided by the sine of 70. And then our calculator will do all the rest of the work for us. The sine of 52.2, close the parentheses on the sine times 10 divided by the sine of 70. Close the parentheses on the sine. And b, our other side, is 8.41. And we have now solved for the missing side and angle of this triangle. So again, the one thing you have to be careful of is as you go around, you have an angle side side. If you have an angle side side, you might have two possibilities. If you have any other combination of letters, there's only one possibility. But 
angle side side is one you have to watch out for. Before we wrap up, let's do one application. Let's say two people, 50 miles apart, have spotted a UFO between them. in the distance. The first person had an angle of elevation of 20 degrees. The second had an angle of elevation of 25 degrees. We want to know how high is the UFO. So we have two people 50 miles apart. And this UFO flying above them that they're both looking up at. The first one had an angle of elevation of 20 degrees. The second one had an angle of elevation of 25 degrees. We want to know how high is that UFO. Now, we might be tempted to use right triangle trig to get started because we do have right angles from that height. The problem is, is we don't have all the pieces we need. We don't know how that 50 is split up on the two sides. And we could use a system of equations with right triangles. But this is going to be much easier to solve using the law of sides. First, we're going to find this missing angle up top. That missing angle up top, we've got 180 degrees in the triangle, 20 degrees from the first person, 25 degrees from the second person. That missing angle is 135 degrees. In this case, as we go around the triangle, we've got, we have to use the 135. It's important because it's opposite the 50 that we know. We always need that opposite relationship to use the law of sines. We go either way around this triangle. I'm just going to go around the right. We've got an angle, an angle, and a side. Angle, angle, side. Nothing wrong with that combination. There's only one triangle possible. So we'll start setting up our law of sines. That the sine of 135 over 50 is equal to, let's use the 25 and its missing opposite side of x. the sine of 25 over x. Solving these, we should be really good at multiplying x on both sides. So it's out of the fraction. Then multiplying by the reciprocal. So we have the sine of 25 times 50 over the sine of 135. And again, really important to close the parentheses on the sine. And so when I pull up my calculator, the sine of 25, close the parentheses, times 50, divided by the sine of 135, close the parentheses, gives us 29.9. So we now know that x side is 29.9. I'm going to scroll down to give us a little more room, because what that tells us is if I look at just this right triangle on the left side, if I copy that triangle down here, we know the hypotenuse is 29.9. We have an angle of 20 degrees. And ultimately, what we're solving for is the height. 
Well, this is just opposite over hypotenuse. This is a regular sine of 20 equals h over 29.9. Solving by multiplying both sides by 29.9, sine of 20 is equal to the height. 29.9 times the sine of 20. Close the parentheses on the sine. And the height is about 10.2 miles. So 10 miles high is this UFO. All right, now it's your turn to practice with the law of sines, that the sine of any angle over its opposite side is equal to the sine of any other angle over its opposite side. Be careful of the angle side side option where there might be 0, 1, or 2 possibilities. Otherwise, there's going to be only one possibility. Take a look at the homework, practice a few of these, and let me know if you have any questions.